بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. They told me they have 45 minutes and they told me there is no podium, so I don't have my timer. Usually, I like a podium because I put my phone and I click the timer, so I know the exact time. So tonight we're speaking all night, inshallah. When I decide that I've said whatever I wanted to, inshallah, we will go home. Maybe we will read Salat al-Tahajjud. It's a good idea, at least. And we might end up, mashallah, making some dua that will be accepted by the will of Allah. Nonetheless, I want to tell you something. We are human beings. Do you agree? That wasn't loud enough. Maybe some of them are jinn, huh? We are human beings. Am I right? Mashallah. I tell you, as human beings, we make mistakes. When we make mistakes, wouldn't we like to be forgiven? You want to be forgiven, right? If you make a mistake, you say, look, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Sometimes, the person that you wronged is yourself. I made a mistake. The only one who was hurt was me. No one else. In that case, it's not so bad because you understand that I wronged myself. But... In the case where you wronged someone else, some of them are so close to you and they love you so much without saying, I'm sorry, they forgive you. Do you agree? So say, for example, I had an argument with my mother and uh, what happens is a little while later, I realized I was wrong. That's my mother. I shouldn't have arguments with my mother because my mother is always right. You see, all the women are saying right. They are mothers. They said it loudly. My mother is always Mother is always right, no matter what. In actual fact, that's not a true statement. She's not always right. But if you have disrespected her, then you are always wrong for the disrespect. So nothing justifies the issue of disrespect. If your mother is wrong, if she comes up and does something really bad, it's your right to tell her, but it needs to be very respectful. If you don't respect your mother, you're not connected with Allah in the proper way. The reason is, Allah created you and chose your mother for you. You need to give her and offer her kindness and respect. We mentioned this hadith so many times where the Prophet wasallam said, who is from among all the people most deserving of my good companionship, my kindness. And so he said, your mother, your mother, your mother. You know the hadith, right? It's true. And then the fourth time he said, and your father. Your mother will actually excuse you and forgive you without you saying, I'm sorry, forgive me. It happens a lot of the time. Some mothers, they wait for you. Some mothers, they will hold it in their heart for 20 years. And after 20, you know, one day, you know what you did to me when you were six years old? Maybe not as bad as six, because six is a little bit young. But sometimes a little bit older. You know what you did to me when you were young? You did this. But in the case of the majority of mothers, they wouldn't even, they would tell you, don't even say, I'm sorry, don't worry, my son, I love you, it's okay, forgiven, you are a part of me. So it's forgiven. Why do people forgive you without you saying, I'm sorry and forgive me? Because they love you. I have a habit, I said it before in this hall, and I will, I've said it before elsewhere, and I'm saying it again. I have a habit of forgiving everyone who has done something wrong to me, who is doing right now something wrong to me and who will do something wrong to me until the day I die. Forgive him. Do it. It's okay. It might not be a good quality, but for me, it liberates me. It connects me with Allah. I don't mind. Do what you want. Every day, people send me links of things. People say about me online. I say, Alhamdulillah, it's okay. Allah keeps them busy studying my life and I'm busy studying the life of Muhammad wasallam. I'm doing a better job. You are going to make me busy studying their comments. I don't want to look. Just leave them. Let them do their thing. But they are speaking this and speaking that. Let them say what they want. It's okay. They are talking a load of rubbish. They don't even know you. It's fabricated sometimes. It's an intentional misunderstanding. That's fine. But if you look carefully, the issue of letting go, when you let go of something, Wallahi, you are liberated. It's you who's liberated. When you love and care for people, you say, Oh Allah, it's okay. Leave them, forgive them. And Allah says, I love your quality so much because you're forgiving others, I will forgive you. <laughs> Allah 
Allah says to us and He's encouraging us to embrace, to forgive. Wouldn't you like to be forgiven by Allah? The answer is yes. In that case, forgive them. It's okay. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah has the quality of the all forgiving. So today we are discussing two names of Allah. I started off asking you the question of forgiveness. Because one of the names of Allah is Al-Afu. Al-Afu. They translate it in English, but English does not qualify to translate Arabic. Arabic is one of the richest languages in the world. And English is a poor man's language. Honestly, the whole world might be speaking English, but it has very few words in it, actually. And it's a poor man's language. If you look at how rich your local languages are, it's amazing. You have one word to describe something you need a whole sentence for in English. I was looking at the term al-afiyah, al-afiyah in English. In Arabic, they will say it translates to something close to as-salama. What is as-salama? What is al-afiyah? I need to explain it to you. It will take me five minutes. Maybe I could tell you that which is complete, that which is perfect, that which is protected, and so on. Oh Allah, I ask you al-afiyah. I'm asking you as-salama. I'm asking you safety, peace, protection. I'm asking you to, to grant me holistic health and protect my deen and protect my wealth and protect my family and my children. And that is al-afiyah. And it's only a part of it that I explained. But one word in Arabic, al-afiyah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, ask Allah al-afiyah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal afiyata Oh Allah, I ask you afu and afiyah. What is afu? I told you the name of Allah is al-afu. Afu. So al-afu without the u at the end. Al-afu. Right? Because al-afu, it has a shadda, two vowels at the end, name of Allah. But al-afu without the second vowel, it means pardon. Pardon in the sense that I've forgiven you. It's out. Gone. Whereas ghafoor, al-ghafoor also means the one who forgives. What's the difference? I need to know the difference, right? Why did Allah use two different names referring to something very similar to himself? Al-afu and al-ghafoor. And he uses both of those at times in the verse. Al-afu wa huwa al-afu al-ghafoor. Al-afu al-ghafoor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the, if they are mentioned together, then you need to know that Al-Afu is referring to forgiving you not having done certain things you were supposed to do. And Al-Ghafoor is connected to you being forgiven for having done things you were not supposed to do. Allahu Akbar. Can I give you a quick example? Allah says, pray five times a day and do not drink alcohol. Agree? Meaning, it's not one ayah or something. I'm just telling you two different things, right? One is the issue of praying. I need you to pray five times a day, Allah says. And you need to stay away from alcohol. If you didn't do something you are supposed to do, Allah's afu would cover you when you seek His forgiveness. And when you did something you are not supposed to do, you need to seek forgiveness. Allah's name of al ghafur and His Ghufran, His forgiveness will cover you. That is when they're mentioned together. When they're mentioned separately, they can interchange. But Al-Afu in Arabic actually refers to wiping out or wiping or rubbing off something. Rubbing off. So when Allah's name Al-Afu is mentioned, it means He will cover it and wipe it out and delete it in a way that there is no trace of it at all. No trace of it. What happened? Allah forgave it. Allah pardoned, Allah wiped it out completely. There is no trace of it. You go and you see it's not even there. You look for it, there is no trace of it. You know, when we commit sins as human beings, let me tell even myself, when I was growing up, if we did wrong things, we knew this was wrong. We say, oh Allah, forgive me. As you grow older, so many sins we have committed, small ones and whatever other sins we have done, as time passes, do we not forget that we committed those sins? Wallahi, we forget. If I ask you or you ask me, can you remember the sins you committed when you were 16, 17, 18, 19? I'll tell you, Wallahi, I can't really remember much. Maybe some big things I might remember, but not every day and every year and whatever happened. I cannot remember. That's why we are taught to seek forgiveness every day because the longer you leave it, 
more the chance is that you're going to forget about it and you will not ask Allah's forgiveness for it. But Allah says, you know what? If it was a minor sin, I will wipe it out without you even asking for forgiveness. Minor sins, Allah wipes out without you asking for forgiveness. Did I ask for forgiveness? No. Why did Allah forgive me? Because he is Al-Afu. That's why. He's forgiving. He's the pardoner. Allah says in the Quran, good deeds automatically delete the bad deeds. Who has been for Umrah amongst you? Put up your hands. There is a reason. Put it a bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. MashaAllah, put your hands down. That's quite a good number. May Allah take those who have not been for Umrah to Umrah. May Allah take you for Hajj as well. Say Ameen. From among those seated here and among those who will watch this later perhaps. Umrah. You made one and Umrah. You made another one. The gap that is between the two of them. Any minor sins that were committed between those two. Wiped out by you merely doing the good deed. What was the deed? Umrah. So the hadith also says when you make Hajj. When you make Hajj. The reward of it is nothing but Jannatul Firdaus. Paradise. Who wants Jannah? I want it, you want it, we all want it, right? We want Jannah. So Allah says, one time you went for Umrah. When you go again, the sins between the previous time you were there and this one here, they are wiped out. Wiped out. Without seeking individual forgiveness for minor sins. If it's a major sin, you need to seek individual forgiveness. Oh Allah, I did this, I regret it. Forgive me, ya ilaha al-alameen. May Allah forgive us. But the same applies to salah, your prayer. You did fajr, you did dhuhr, you did asr. The fact that you are doing these good deeds, minor sins in the middle, inshallah, they are wiped out. That doesn't mean, oh, today in Manila, we were told that minor sins are not really a big problem because they will be wiped out between the salahs. It's okay, let me just do these minor sins. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al al azim. No, no. Minor sins are a big problem also because when you continue to do minor, 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 what does it become? Major. It becomes major. So Allah says, no, 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 no. It's not like you intentionally do something. You did it. You were a human being and you made a mistake. You made an error and you continued and you did lots of good. The good thing is Allah on the day of judgment weighs your deeds on the scale. You have more good deeds, you are fortunate. You have more bad deeds, you have lost. You have lost. May Allah grant us the ability to do more good deeds than bad. And may he strengthen us not to do the bad. And wherever we have done them, may he forgive us. So Allah will forgive you. Like I said, without you saying, please forgive me, O Allah, for my innocence. Allah says, we will forgive you. Allah says on top of that, that on the day of judgment, if you come with your bad deeds and your good deeds, and the good deeds are more than the bad deeds, what will we do? We will ignore the bad deeds and put you into Jannah. Why? Because you have more, more good deeds. That's why I do many more good deeds. This is the meaning of the verse. That your good deeds will automatically wipe out the bad deeds. That is Allah. Al-Afu. He forgives. He's the pardoner. I pardon it. Allah does not benefit from holding it against you. Allah doesn't benefit from punishing you. So why does he punish? He wants goodness for you, number one. And number two, he is just. Allah is just. He is fair. Imagine if I, in this world, look at what... Israel is doing to the Palestinians every day thousands of people are being affected either killed or driven out of their homes now millions are displaced and thousands have been killed in in a style as though they are enjoying doing what they are doing do you think that Allah is going to let it go do we not want to see justice we want to see justice will that justice happen in this world in my life Inshallah, but maybe it might not happen the way we want it to happen. But Allah says, leave it to me. It doesn't mean don't do anything about it. I'm speaking about it right now. Right? But what it does mean is that they will pay the heaviest price on the day of Qiyamah, the day of judgment, to say the least. There is no chance, no chance that they are going to be let loose on that day. The day of judgment, Allah will call everyone and bring them to justice. Allah asks a question. Whom is the kingdom for today? There will be dead silence. No one can talk. That is Allah. 
لله الواحد القهار. Kingdom belongs to Allah, the one, the one, the most powerful, the one, the irresistible, cannot resist Allah. He's there. So don't you want to see justice? So Allah will not forgive you for something you did against someone else, right? When they want the justice against you, you will have to pay, pay in this world. But Allah says, you did something against me, I can forgive it. And that's why they say, backbiting is worse than adultery. Adultery they committed is a sin between them and Allah. It's a major sin. It is forgivable by Allah. You seek the forgiveness, Allah is Al Afu Al Ghafur. And on top of that, another name of Allah is Al Ghaffar. What's the difference? Ghaffar is a term in the Arabic language, the name that refers to something being repeated. So Allah is oft forgiving. The one who forgives again and again and again and again and again. That is Ghaffar. Look at the mercy of Allah. And that is why if you take a look at Aisha radiallahu anha when she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that if I see and witness the night of decree Laylatul Qadr what should I do or say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says say Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni Oh Allah you are al-afu you love to pardon so pardon me. You love to forgive. So forgive me. In what sense? Forgive me for things I remember, things I don't remember, things I did openly, things I did silently, quietly, privately, things I did by day, things I did by night, things I did that were major, things I did that were minor. Forgive me for everything. Why? Because you are the one who loves to forgive. So forgive me. One narration says, if we did not sin, Allah would bring about people who sinned in order for them to seek forgiveness that Allah forgave them. This hadith does not mean Allah wants you to sin, but rather it is there in order to give you hope to say, don't lose the hope. Allah is al afu al ghafur al ghaffar al tawwab What is tawwab It's another name which is quite similar. Tabayatubu is one who returns to Allah. If I say, astaghfirullah, what, what have I done? I have done seeking forgiveness al ghaffar and al ghafur will accept your astaghfirullah you understand what i'm saying can i explain it al ghaffar is the one who forgives you often al ghafur is the one who forgives he will forgive you when you say astaghfirullah oh allah i seek your forgiveness those two qualities come into play and allah's forgiven you right i sought forgiveness but did i change my life did i change my life changing your life could be a separate matter it could be a separate matter in the sense that I said oh Allah forgive me but my life didn't really change so much but when you changed your life you became a person Raja'a ilallahi Taba ilallah to go back to Allah that is called Tawba when your life changed and you went back to Allah it's Tawba it is Tawwab the name of Allah Allah says when you change your life you came back to us we accept it from you now look Many of you here are new Muslims, reverts, Balik Islam, converts, call it what you want, right? The day you stood and you said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, what happened? The Prophet says, Ya Khalid, inna al Islam ya jubbu ma qabla. Happens. The Prophet says, Oh Khalid, when you accept Islam, it deletes all the bad that you did before it completely. You start off new, brand new. Wow, that's amazing. Your life changed. Guess what? I want to give you good news. Whoever makes tawbah has the same reward. Has the what? The same reward. That's the hadith. The one who did tawbah from a sin is equivalent to the one who didn't commit the sin. Why? You might say that's not fair, right? I stayed without committing the sin. That guy committed the sin and made tawbah and you're telling me he's equivalent to me who didn't sin? You understand? It's not fair, right? That's what someone would say. Allah says, no. The fact that he turned back for us 
and he left something after tasting what it was like or whatever it might have been and he decided oh Allah forgive me and I'm coming back to you only for you even though I have the ability to do it again and again but I have chosen not to for you Allah says that act of worship is so high that it's equivalent to the one who didn't sin at all and he didn't have the opportunity to do exactly that wow you might not understand it fully but if you think about it it makes sense imagine a drunkard I want to tell all of you we all have some habits we're trying hard to get rid of. Some of us are hooked onto pornography, some onto alcohol, some onto drugs, some onto maybe just wasting time on the phone with the opposite sex, maybe with the same sex. Na'udhu billahi. But all of that, when you know that there is something displeasing to Allah and you hold back no matter how much you really want to fall in it, don't you deserve, don't you deserve something great? A guy who never ever tasted a drug, he's got a very high status in that regard. I always tell the kids, don't even smoke, not even a puff, not even a cigarette. Don't even try it. Because one thing leads to another. Before you know, they are trying weed. And before you know, they are trying some other drug. Just now people were saying Duterte is no longer here. The drug problem is coming up again. I think it's true. More and more people are looking and I tell myself Duterte is no longer there. You know what I'm talking about, right? May Allah make it easy. We have a few politicians sitting here. They must be thinking this man is entering dangerous territory. No, no, it's okay. I'm only mentioning one good point. But what I want to tell you is for someone who was there, they are addicted and hooked. Don't they need a lot of power, encouragement, willpower, strength to quit something they're addicted to? And they turn back to Allah. Allah says, you know what? I forgive you. You are equivalent to the one who didn't do it. Khalas, come, let's go. We start off new leaf. That's why Allah does not want you to lose hope in his mercy. Because if you were doubting the mercy of Allah, and if he told you that, no, I'm still going to punish you, or you're not equal to this, you would lose hope. You would lose hope completely to say, you know what? I sinned, now it's over. I'm, as it is, I'm going to hell. Let me just sin whatever other sins they are. Allah says, no, 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 no. Come back because you know what? You are equal to someone who didn't sin because of your coming back and changing your whole life. So much so there is a bonus that person gets that Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Furqan. You want to hear it? Allah says, when you repent to him and you quit your bad ways and you changed your life and you did good deeds after that, he takes your bad deeds and he puts them on the right side of the scale and converts them into good deeds. When you come on the day of judgment, you'll see a massive pile of good deeds. What was that? That was your turning and those were your bad deeds that became good deeds as a result of you changing your entire life for the sake of Allah. That's a bonus, a big bonus. So that doesn't mean, okay, let me go and sin for a few years. Then when I come back, imagine all of that is going to become good deeds. Allah says, no, you can't do that. You don't know how long you're going to live. You don't, you can't plan to do all of that. You might die in the middle of a sin. May Allah grant us all a good death in salah, in sujood. Ameen. That is al-afu. Allah says, forgive. I was telling you about the day of judgment when justice will be served against these murderers. Genocide perpetrators. Justice will be served to the degree that they will be made to pay the price of every single person they enjoyed killing. They're making it a game. Go and watch how the people are going and dancing and making and looking for babies and kids and playing the fool. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. May Allah grant us victory. My brothers and sisters, justice comes and Allah has kept the day of judgment there. He will bring justice. If there was no justice, it would be so unfair. Imagine going and Allah says, you know what? It's okay. There's no justice. I'll just do what I want. No, Allah says, I am just. I am fair. If I told you that you will pay the price, you will pay the price. If I told you that this will happen, it will happen. Allah does not go against his promised time or his promises in any way, shape or form. He made a promise. It's a promise. The only time Allah will excuse you and he will let go of you when you've done something wrong against him or against yourself. Allah says, it's okay. That's why Allah says, Tell my worshippers who have wronged themselves that don't worry, Allah will forgive all your sins. You wronged yourself, Allah will forgive all your sins. This is Allah, Al Afu.
The second name we were to discuss in today's speech is Al-Wadud. It's connected in to the first one. Al-Wadud means the most loving. Allah calls himself the most loving. Allah calls himself the pardoner. It's out of his love for us that he pardons. Didn't I tell you moments ago, when someone pardons you without you having said, I'm sorry, he loves you or she loves you. Allah says, minor sins, you don't even have to say, I'm sorry, it's gone, it's wiped out, khalas, it's over. Imagine, out of his love, he's pardoning. Because he's wadud, he's also afu. Because he's wadud, he's afu. If he was not wadud, how would he be afu and ghafoor and tawab and ghaffar and those names which are connected to forgiveness? So many names are connected to forgiveness, not just one. In order to give you hope in the mercy of Allah, Rahman, Rahim, Subhanallah, lovely, beautiful names of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate, the beneficent, the forgiving, the pardoner, the one who oft forgives, the one who loves to forgive, loves to forgive. That's a name, man. That's an amazing name. It brings a smile to my face straight away. Loves to forgive. Wow. Loves to forgive. Oh Allah, forgive our shortcomings. So Wadud is a level of love. These names have appeared in the Quran. Allah says, indeed, my Lord is merciful and he's most loving. He's most loving. Allah is most loving. Allah mentions in one of the verses of the Quran, the two terms together. Which two? The first name I spoke about is Al-Afu. And then Allah speaks about Al-Qadir, the all able. Allah is able. He has Qudra, but still he just pardons. I can but I forgive. Allah says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَعْفُوا عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ It is Allah who accepts the repentance of a person and He wipes out or He pardons the sins of the people. He pardons. The difference between the two, one, I sought the forgiveness. The other one, Allah says, I just forgave you. And he knows what you do. That's the rest of the verse. He knows what you do. Allah says that when I know that I can destroy you because of your sin, still I forgave you. It shows power. It shows power. Imagine if you know that the person who wronged you, you can fix him up. Would you not fix him up? Someone came and stole something from you. Someone came and slapped you. Someone came and swore you and you know you are a powerful person or you're very strong. What would you do? Slap you, slap him back, drop him to the ground, pack him away and maybe even more in the Philippines, right? It's true. Someone stole from you, not just him, but in some countries, him and everything around him is in trouble. Why? Because he stole from you and you're a big man, right? But if you're a weak person and someone slapped you, what do you do? Come on. You got to look at him and say, thank you, sir. Am I right? Because a big man came, strong guy, he says, hey, one slap on your face. You say, what are you going to do? You might look at another person who's strong and tell them, right? Because you know I'm weak, I can't really do anything. Which one is more powerful? Tell me. The one who has all the power, but he still does not do anything. Or the one who has all the power and he does whatever he can. Who is more powerful? The one who knows that he can crush you to the last piece, but he just lets go. He says, it's okay. That's the more powerful. So the most powerful of all is Allah because he does it every single day and every moment of the day. How many of us have sinned? I have sinned. We have all sinned. We make mistakes knowingly, unknowingly, not only mistakes, sometimes intentionally something happens. We are doing a sin. We know. Allah says, I know what you did. And you know what? I know. And it's only going to affect you and bother you. You wronged yourself and you went against a command and an instruction. But I'll forgive you. I'll let go of you. It's okay. I'll leave you. Wow. Subhanallah. You know what? I want to tell you something that's going to be maybe a dispute amongst some people. Listen. A wife catches the husband doing something bad. Or the husband catches the wife doing something bad. Maybe there are SMSs on your phone that need a little bit of tafsir. You know what that means? That means you need to explain to me what's going on here. Number one, don't spy on each other. It doesn't help you at all. Many of the scholars say it's actually prohibited because the Quranic verse says, Don't spy at all. It includes all types of spying and more so amongst each other. However, something you came across and you know what? 
You happen to see these messages. Oh, in now you need an explanation. A lot of the times what people do, they break the marriage because of something like this. Completely broken. It's over. I don't want. I can't stay with you. I'm out. Five minutes before that, you are the love of my life. Can you not sit and try and help the love of your life? Or, exp or try and mend things? Or try and help them to come out of things? No, 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 no. They crossed a red line. But five minutes before, five seconds before, you were just sitting together and saying, you're, you're the love of my life. And now suddenly everything is over and broken. I want to advise you. Try and look into the matter. See what it is. See how bad it is. See where it has gone. See if you can mend things. Wallahi, if you can mend something, the strength of the relationship will definitely be far greater when you have succeeded in helping a spouse come out of a mess that they were in than if you didn't have that mess in the first place. Because you sacrificed for them. I love you so much. So I'm going to give you another chance for the sake of Allah and for the sake of both of us and for the sake of whatever else there is. Remember my words, I said, it, you need to know what it is and how far it is and all of that, I said it, I covered myself. So don't come and say, I said that you must just forgive no matter what he's done or she, because now it's both sides. It could happen. The thing is with Allah, Allah Almighty is unique and he's different. Allah says his quality is that he will forgive you again and again and again and again. And automatically there comes a time when your relationship with Allah becomes stronger as you grow older. It becomes supposed to become stronger. Many people, majority of the people, I'm talking of believers who have weaknesses. As time progresses, they become closer to Allah, don't they? It's very rare where you find a person very obedient. And when they're growing older and older, they are now more and more and more disobedient. Normally it's the other way around. Normally it's the other way around. It's unusual, it's there, but very rare. Allah Almighty reminds us to say, turn back. I will mend the relationship with you. Whoever comes to me walking, I come to him rushing. I come faster than you. You want to come to me? Come. I will show you the peace that you will get. But you need to make an effort to come to me. Don't worry, come. You want to change your life? Change it today. When you come to me, you will see what you will get, what I will do for you. This is Allah. He is most loving. He's waiting for you at any time. He will give you fresh air to breathe. He will allow your heart to pump 136,000 times on average a day. He will allow it to pump without you paying a penny. Even if you didn't read Salah for the whole of the five Salahs, and that is sinful and it's a major sin and it's a pillar of Islam that you're knocking down. But Allah says, never mind your heart is pumping. This is happening. It's Allah's love. He's giving you a chance. He's, he cares. He cares for all humans. He cares for all animals. He cares for everything. It's Allah. So it's amazing. Allah's love is unmatched. Do not doubt it. No matter how much love your mother can show you, Allah's love is beyond 70 times that. You believe in Allah. He's the most loving, the most kind. That does not mean he's encouraging you to do as you want because he's most loving. No. He's loving. His love is there for those who try to achieve it. You love your spouse. Why? You made an effort. You got married. What else? Or you made an effort and you worked towards something. You sacrificed. You tried to achieve their love and you achieved each other's love. What is it? It's a connection. Who built it? The two of you built it by the permission of Allah. With Allah, you want his love. Well, build a relationship. Get up for salah. Your five daily prayers is one of the first Stepping stones to the love of Allah. Then you feel the love. When you are praying hard for something and he does not give it to you. You know my connection with him is so strong that if he did not give me this. Wallahi it is better for me that he did not give it to me. Why? Because I trust him and I love him and he loves me. And this is why does not only mean the most loving it also means the one who instills the love in the hearts. He's al wadud. What does he say in the Quran? Those who believe and do good deeds, Allah, the most merciful, will place for them love in the hearts of the people. What was that? That's part of the love of Allah. So you love someone simply because they are believers and they do good deeds. And Allah has placed their love in your heart. 
you need to be a person who also has a little connection with Allah to, to feel that love. Because there are some people who love shayateen, right? They love shayateen, they love the satans, they love evil people. Because they themselves are not connected to Allah. If you are connected to Allah, even in the smallest way, like I said, the first stepping stone is what? The first stepping stone, your five salah. If you have your salah, Allah will help you to love only good people. To love only those who are close to Allah. You see them, you interact with them, you want to know them, you, are feel, you feel connected to them. You feel a good feeling when you are with them or when you interact or connected in whatever way. Because why? You are connected with Allah, they too are connected to the same Allah. But if you have in your heart shaitan, you will only love those who are also connected to shaitan. There it goes. This is why make an effort, make an effort towards Allah, see the difference. It will change everything. It will grant you such a peace and such a goodness that when you are about to return to Allah one day, when you're about to return to Allah, say for example, if you get old, now your knees start aching and paining and you are a little bit sickly, all those things Allah knows. He wants you just be patient, don't worry. One day you're going to get old and one day you're going to get sick and one day you're going to die and one day you're going to come back to me and one day you're going to meet me and one day I'm going to show you my love for you, my forgiveness for you and I will give you your place in paradise. Allahu Akbar. I need to go. I need to die. I need to what? I need to die if I want to go there. So when you're about to die, Allah's love overtakes everything and he gives you a comforting feeling within your heart. That you, what is awaiting me is beautiful, it's good, it's, am it's better than this world. Why do you believe that? Because you're connected with Allah. I don't need to stay here anymore. It's okay, I'm going to go. I'm gonna, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal, I tried hard to please my maker. Now I'm going back to my maker. I'm a happy person. I'm a very happy person. The Quran says, the angels come down to those who were connected to Allah. Before, at the point of death, and they tell the person, don't worry, no need to fear. For you, there is a place in paradise. Those who believe and they do istiqama, they are straight, connected with Allah, they are straight, good people. Allah says the angels will come down to tell them at that moment, don't worry. Don't be sad. Don't worry. What you're going through, amazing. You know what? Jannah is awaiting you that you have been promised. It's there. May Allah grant us that good news. I've seen people pass away in my life. At the point of death, I've seen people on a few occasions. And some of them, they begin to smile. Just prior to death, they look around and they are smiling. What are you looking at? Allahu A'lam. They're just smiling. Some of you might have seen that. What happened? According to what we were taught, the angels of death that came were so pleasant and a word was whispered to them exactly as the Quran has described. May Allah grant us good. What is this? Is this not the love of Allah? Is this not Him pardoning us? Is this not our Lord? We have a Lord who is most forgiving. What more do I want? We have a Lord who is most loving. What more do we want? We have a Lord who is waiting for us. What more do we want? Without me asking for things, He has given me Billions of things, wallahi. He is loving. He is forgiving. He has overlooked my shortcomings. What more do I want? That's Allah and that is the Lord of the worlds. That's why when we say the theme of this event is A-I. Have you seen that? Allah is. And I was tasked to speak about two of the names of Allah. And these were the two. Al-Afu and Al-Wadud. Imagine if we had to go through all of the 99 or more than 99 of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would it not have been amazing? So I want to give you some homework. And that is, go through the names of Allah and check their meanings and what they entail and to try and memorize them. This is the reason why the hadith says, Inna lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala tis'atan wa tis'ina isma mi'atan illa wahida man ahsaha aw hafidaha dakhal al-jannah. Allah has 99 names which if they are memorized and safeguarded and protected by anyone, that person will go straight to paradise. Because by the time you have protected, understood, worked towards 
and believed in all of those names, you become a person who's connected with Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect us with him in every way.